Too late isn't in your vocabulary. Reach your next goal at University of Maryland Global Campus. Get the accredited education you want wherever you are, on your own schedule. UMGC offers online degrees and certificates to help you level up your skills. Apply now and save with no application fee through May 31st. For more than 75 years, UMGC has been transforming adult lives. Access online courses, faster onboarding, and success coaches that help you along the way. Plus, UMGC makes an accredited online education more affordable than ever with scholarships, interest-free payment plan, and no-cost digital resources in place of most textbooks. Choose from more than 125 degree and certificate programs in career-relevant fields and receive lifetime career services at no additional cost. Gain skills local employers are looking for in business, cyber, IT, healthcare, and more. Get started on your undergraduate or graduate degree or certificate online. No application fee if you apply by May 31st. Learn more at umgc.edu slash podcast. Certified to operate by CHEV. Do you dream of early retirement? Receiving passive income each month from your rental properties? Make that dream a reality by investing with a team that has helped thousands of investors achieve early retirement through real estate investing. Rent to Retirement offers fully turnkey properties that are newly built or renovated, leased and professionally managed, allowing you to invest with confidence out of state. They have single family, multifamily, new build and syndication opportunities across multiple markets. Rent to Retirement assists investors in learning how to build a comprehensive business plan with the best investment and tax strategies to achieve financial freedom through real estate investing. There's no excuse not to get started in real estate investing when you have the right team and systems already in place. To learn more, visit renttoretirement.com slash daily. That's renttoretirement.com slash daily or call 800-311-6781. That's 800-311-6781 to learn more about how you can get started investing in some of the best cash flow markets today. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2287, Estate Planning 101, by Jesse Kramer of bestinterest.blog. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Thanks so much for joining today. I have another article that can help you optimize your finances, as usual. So with that, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Estate Planning 101 by Jesse Kramer of bestinterest.blog. What happens when you die? Will your soul travel to an ethereal plane? Does your spirit remain on earth? Or more simply, does your body decompose from whence it came? Welcome to The Existential Interest, a new blog where I wax philosophical on the deepest human questions. Nah, just kidding. Who knows what happens after you die? Not me. Unless, of course, the topic is estate planning and what happens to your finances after you die. I'm starting to spend more time on the best interest writing about deeper financial planning issues. Estate planning is a big one. So let's start with the basics of estate planning. The basics of estate planning. If the context hasn't clued you in, estate planning answers the question, what happens to your assets when you die or if you get incapacitated? Your first big takeaway today, most people don't think about the incapacitation part. Who is given your assets? When are they given? How are they given? Who is involved? Attorney, accountants, etc. Estate planning is almost always done with an attorney. CFP financial planners are frequently involved too. The main goals are to ensure that your money goes where you want to the people and the causes that mean most to you. Your beneficiaries and heirs aren't saddled with an unexpected estate tax or gift tax. And your assets are invested in an appropriate fashion based on your wishes and associated timelines. The documents. Estate planning involves many legal documents, but thankfully there are a basic set of three. Number one, a will plus guardianship. A will states how you wish to distribute your assets and guardianship, which is often included in a will, is about your children and other dependents. What will happen to them and who will care for them after your death or in the event you're no longer able to care for them? Number two, power of attorney or POA sometimes called financial POA or durable POA, gives legal rights to another person to handle your non-health 
non-medical affairs in case of your incapacitation. And number three, an advanced healthcare directive, AHCD, states your medical preferences if you become incapacitated while designating someone else to make medical decisions for you if you're unable. AHCD is used interchangeably with medical POA and healthcare proxy, though there are nuanced differences between the three documents. What are trusts? Trusts, in simple terms, are a three-party fiduciary agreement. Party one, the trustor grantor, has assets. They give party two, the trustee, rights to hold the assets on behalf and for the benefit of party three, the beneficiary. These parties can be various people or organizations. Frequently, party one and party three are individual people, and party two can often be an independent advisor, like an attorney or a bank's trust department. Why set up a trust? It might be to ensure your wishes are followed post-death, or to reduce a tax burden, or to leave a small annual charitable gift for many years to come, or to provide assets to young descendants in the future. There are many reasons. Do you need a trust? That's not a simple question. A trusted advisor, such as a trust or a state attorney or CFP financial planner is a great person to ask. The 11 steps of estate plan creation. Estate planning 101 isn't too bad. Here are the 11 steps I recommend people follow. Number one, inventory all of your assets and debts. What do you own and who do you owe? Number two, while you're living, ensure your family is protected against your death. In other words, buy appropriate life insurance, term policies, not whole. Number three, determine the estate planning documents you need. You might want to consult a professional for this. Number four, identify a guardian for your children, pets, etc. Unless you're a very serious prankster, you'll want to check in with the potential guardian first. Number five, Establish your estate planning documents. The three discussed before, a will, a power of attorney, and an advanced healthcare directive are generally considered must-haves for everyone. Number six, name your beneficiaries. Some accounts like IRAs and 401ks don't care about what your will says. You need to name the account's beneficiary with the account itself. Have you checked your beneficiaries lately? There are horror stories of people living million-dollar IRA accounts to an ex-spouse from 30 years ago simply because the deceased never updated their account beneficiaries while alive. Number seven, who else is involved? Do you have an attorney, accountant, financial planner, etc. that you're working with? You'll likely want them named in some capacity in your estate plan. Number eight, finalize, sign, and notarize your estate plan. Number nine, notify your guardians and executors. Let them know what your will says and how they might end up involved in the future. Number 10, keep the documents safe. Store a copy of your estate plan in a safe place. And number 11, review and update your estate plan. Two good rules of thumb are one, review and update at every major life event and or number two, once every five years. You'll notice this list is age agnostic. Whether you're 35 or 75, the 11 steps in this list are a terrific way to get your estate plan in order. Sure, there are complexities to estate planning. You probably don't wanna tackle this task yourself. But conceptually, estate planning isn't a scary topic. There are far more frightening existential thoughts to consider. You just listened to the post titled Estate Planning 101 by Jesse Kramer of bestinterest.blog. This episode is brought to you by Circle. Circle is building a digital dollar that's backed one-to-one. It's where crypto meets stability, where local businesses meet global customers, and the U.S. dollar meets USDC. Visit circle.com slash Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Dave. When you need money in a pinch, Dave can help. It's a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly. No interest, late fees, or credit check. Join the millions already using Dave to get financial relief and sign up for an extra cash account to get up to $500 instantly. Go to dave.com slash Spotify or download the Dave app now. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. 
I thought Jesse provided a nice outline of basic estate planning, but I also wanted to point out that we should get organized to help our loved ones find all this documentation and information they really need to settle our affairs. This will be enormously helpful to them in the event of our death, but also in emergency situations where you're incapacitated. This is where an emergency binder comes in. It's sometimes referred to as an in case I'm hit by a bus binder. This binder should include your will as well as contact information for important people in your life, including employers. Also insurance policies, all financial accounts, health records, property deeds, and car titles. Having all your stuff organized is going to be a huge help to your loved ones who will likely need to figure this stuff out during a very emotional time. There are a number of resources online for checklists to help you create your binder. And I came across a pretty comprehensive resource on the Smart Money Mamas blog. It's a fillable step-by-step family emergency binder with over 90 pages of simple printable worksheets. And that's another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. Thanks for being here and making another episode possible. And be sure to come back tomorrow for more where your optimal life awaits.